All right, guys, touch grab back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Welcome back to Valorant News. Plenty to dive into today. A clip has emerged of the Vietnamese player that was banned that we talked about in yesterday's video from the Vietnamese challenges situation going on right now. But also, Mixwell officially benched by G2 and exploring other options. Very much intrigued your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. It's the best thing you can do. Top this channel, reach new people. And please do subscribe as well if you haven't yet already. First of all, this is from Saw Gaming. They confirmed a new team. There was some talk about this organization kind of recently, right, because some of their players they might have, um, well, held them to pretty high buyouts, right, they're trying to sell some of these guys onto bigger organizations, but they bring in a new squad of five, as you guys can see right here. Also, Dark Zero, they confirmed their foster. Jammies is going to be the fifth player on their team, definitely a player that's been talked about quite a lot, so Jamal Jammies, but Gash, he's going to join the Dark Zero guys going forwards. Let's talk then about this, oh, well, the, the cheater situation that went down yesterday. So, there's an official article that now comes out on the on the Play Valorant site, that it will says Valorant Esports has banned non Simpai as the name from um, the ICJ2 team that we looked at yesterday has been of course completely disqualified so um, well cheating in any Valorant queue is against the rules in competitive play violates the rules of fair play that's um, obviously not a massive surprise violated section 7.2.5 of the competition policy and it will therefore he'll be disqualified and he'll be banned from participating in all right competitions for 36 months starting 26th of January 2022 now um, I think when we first saw this it said it was going to be a 12 month ban now it's a 36 month ban which it does kind of feel like a, a more just reward. To me, it's kind of a surprise there's a, well, an, even a limit on this ban, right? I thought, honestly, if you get caught cheating in a, in a professional match, like, you'd just be banned forever. Like, there's no coming back for you. Now, um, of course, the rest of his team, difficult for them if they didn't know, right? Because, but you know, at the end of the day, maybe you would have known. Like, there might have been an inkling at the very least. Always a discussion about this, right? When someone's cheating, like, did the rest of the team know? It can be hard to call in certain situations. But, um, yeah, he's banned. His team has now been disqualified. I guess they'll have the chance without him to get back in. But, again, I'll share the clip for you guys. Guys. This, I'm pretty sure, is the one that got him banned here on Haven, where, um, well, he goes into the middle doors. He, uh, well, uh, completely tracks on this guy's head around the wall. It's pretty blatant, honestly, this one. Like, uh, well, tough to defend. Let's dive into some more roster stuff then. As George Geddes points out a couple of days ago, we saw this a couple of days ago, yeah, with Baby Bay, Larry Bank, shot up Flyer and Dicey being at the Phase Clan lineup we imagine is going to be confirmed relatively soon indeed. But also, it seems like they're going to bring on an Academy roster. I believe it was going to be the case that Larry Banks and shot up were going to lead up the Academy, but they thought they're actually going to start these players. So this is, I believe, at their starting roster. They've also got an Academy team in the works. Yoshi, Kadek, like at Bones Wubby and, and Dim Sum Boy or something is going to be their Academy roster, it seems, with that, of course, the main team acquiring these guys as, um, as previously reported as he points out alongside Baby Bay. So um, yeah, seems like that's going to be the play for FaZe Clan. They've of course got both sides of the, of the park and um, I mean yeah, I guess they're going to develop these players going forward. Really interested to see how their starting team does just because the last team had so much talent but um, really didn't put all that much together. Some people are saying this roster is kind of similar in terms of how they're being formatted but things of course will only continue to change. Let's talk about this from the Mixwell side. So G2 of course we saw Mixwell play for G2 as they kind of, you know, Jet, op player, or whatever, and um, well, he played for them in the first closed qualifier that they got into to get into challenges. They um, they completely bombed out of that qualifier. They went 0-2, lost in the first round of winners, lost in the first round of losers to Alliance, I believe, who didn't end up qualifying anyway, and um, and they were straight out of there. For the next qualifier, then they had to go through the open side, which is a much higher, well, a longer gruel, really, get through to the closed qualifier, win the closed qualifier, which they did in the end, but not before they'd actually benched Mixwell and brought Kelox in again. And Nuki talked a couple of days ago that, um, you know, he was kind of had his frustrations with how Kilox handled himself when he was in the team the first time around, when Coldamenta was there as well, and, um, you know, just a lot of talents, but I didn't really take practice all that seriously, and I guess really putting Kilox to the bench has kind of changed his mindset, and now when he gets his second chance, he's certainly not going to squander it. So Mixwell is now on the bench. Now, um, as he says, I have permission to search for options, and I'm open to any offer, so it seems like Mixwell is basically going to be out of there. They've told him, look, we don't require your services anymore, we're much happier with the team with Kilox in it than yourself, so, um, and Mixwell of course, really on that role, was probably underperforming to some degree. It felt like they might need an upgrade in that certain side of things to, well, make the team better. Seems like they did that with Kilox coming back, and, uh, well, they got a lot better, right? They they won the open qualifier, or they got through the open qualifier convincingly. Then they won the event, beating Excel in the finals, also very convincingly. So, um, you know, still, Mixwell finds himself out of a team. Definitely a legend of Spanish esports, and, um, I mean, yeah, for the Counter-Strike days and Optic, right? And then, of course, uh, well, coming through to today, it's, um, it's good to see how he has progressed, but also, well, best of luck for him actually finding a team 
going forward. So as he says, I was the last man remaining from the initial lineup that started everything. Thanks for your support, right? So yeah, going forwards, like G2 have completely, uh, well, nuked their roster with them, well, from the starting lineup that they had. And Mixwell is now going to be going elsewhere as well. Now, where could he potentially go? That is a question some people are asking. Could he join a Spanish organization? There was some talk, I think, on stream from Ebay a couple of days ago, like a big Twitch streamer. There's that they were looking at Mixwell, like at maybe trying to make something work there with some organization. So difficult to say what's happening there. There was some talk from a well, Bodog, right? He was trying to push this whole, like he's going to join the Koi roster thing, which, you know, who knows? Because one day I'm sure Mixwell could find another roster, plays up against G2 again on, on a big stage. And, um, you know, always going to be exciting when that type of stuff goes down. And this also was noticed, right? The Koi said at five, we have something to announce. And uh, some people were saying, hey, like this is going to happen straight away. But usually when a player tweets out that they're open to offers and they're getting benched, it's pretty unlikely that just like two hours later, they're signed to an organization. Everything's going on. They want to field some offers. They want to take their time to do so. So yes, doesn't seem like this will be the case as of yet. And well, they tweet this out a little bit later. There's that they will be competing in the Spanish league this season. So yes, things have been confirmed with the announcements that a lot of these organizations getting invited to the VLR, the regional leagues, right, that are going on at the same time. I must say the format here for the Valorant side is relatively complicated to figure out. Okay, there's challenges, there's masters, there's champions, there's game changers, there's like um, the third party organizers, and there's also the VRL, the regional leagues, going on at the same time in each region. But maybe this could be an appropriate grind for a guy like Mixwell to get into this type of situation, then it work his way back up to try and, uh, well, qualify for challenges, well, I guess for stage two, when that, of course, does come around. This also from Rise Nation, we talked a few days ago that, um, well, Rise were certainly in consideration, selling their Valorant roster, and that the players weren't happy at all. They were saying they were kind of locked in a contract, they were, um, well, effectively getting sold out, it sort of seemed to another organization, and um, didn't really seem like they wanted to be part of that. Now, um, as it turns out, an update to this story, the deal is still ongoing, the players are yet to sign to the new organization, Rise will now likely remain under Rise for the beginning of the upcoming VCT. So yes, the deal is still going through, but um, it's taking some time. Therefore, they're still going to be called Rise, it seems, for the start of the VCT, and then whatever organization is coming in to buy these guys out is um, is apparently still going to be happening. But um, still, the guys weren't particularly happy with what it meant for them, it seems, but uh, still, I guess, Rise, and they felt they were getting held to their contracts too much. They wanted to leave, go to another organization, but uh, maybe they'll be happy with this because they wanted to stay with their team. Pretty sure FaZe wanted to buy these guys with the exception of Shanks, but uh, they stayed with the roster. Uh, I guess a new organization is going to get the benefit of these very talented players at the present time. This also for Valorant Esports North America, the Challengers NA Open Qualifiers talent coming up in just a couple of days here. This is the talent lineup. Really happy for I hold Shift and the rest of these guys. Like, um, Shift's been grinding for years to get it. Well, get a good chance like this, so really cool to see. Not sure Gare's unfortunate, but you know, we can always hope for next time. Hopefully these guys do a cracking job for sure. Just wanted to mention this while we're on the subject of qualifiers, because, well, the North American qualifiers are just coming up in the coming days. Also, these participating teams in the Brazilian side, these are going to be the rosters that are going to compete in the Brazilian challenges. And here are those 10 organizations that you can see right now. This also from Vanity, just to mention, we did talk about this a couple of days ago, and I thought it was quite interesting. You'll see what I'm seeing, he says, which is that, well, the current rankings in North America for the Valorant teams. Cloud9 now are actually a clear number one. The few days ago, we just saw that Sentinels had lost their number one spot, technically, just because, you know, it's a, a decay type situation, because they performed worse at Champions than Cloud9 did. Over time, their better performances previously are going to get counted for less, and therefore they're considered to be a worse team now than Cloud9 are. But I guess given Cloud9's recent victory, they handled that tournament, like um, a 6 0 runners of recent drive beating NRG in the finals, they're now a pretty high rated team, and significantly, according to VR VLR ratings, the number one team in North America, which is, um, you know, kind of surprising, I guess. Rise down now in fifth, exit. Like, um, you know, it's going to be very exciting. These top four teams are all already qualified for the Challengers event, of course, for Challengers straight in. But uh, all these rest of the teams are going to have to fight tooth and nail to qualify for that event. And just to finish off with a nice LA here from Sick, with, um, you know, I guess how Neon can potentially be used here on Haven. But very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and tell us a YouTube god. It's a good video. I just like you should see it as well. And I'll grow the competitive Valorant community. Thank you watching as always. Take care. And I will see you next time. <laughs> Contando ya Fields con la pelea Easter, busca el segundo disparo, pero este sí que no conectaba, tiene la definitiva igual lo que puede utilizar, y sí, dicho y hecho, vuela por los aires, busca cortar algún, algún pelo, hacer algún peinado exótico, cambia la perito, lo tiene enfrente, dispara y se lo lleva, ¡ay no!